uh, I'm on Jennifer's mic right here. Amen. There, there we go. Amen. You got me? Hey, buddy. We're just doing some testing right quick. Now, this is my mic, okay? Try it one more time. Try my mic. Two. Testing one, two. Is it working? Hello? I'll try it. It's been having some problems. If so, we'll go back to Jen's mic. Are we clear? We good? I can't see you. I, I, I'm imagining you're nodding your head. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Let's get up on our feet, guys. Let's have church this morning. Amen. Come on. Folks are coming in from the outside. Yeah, there we go. Come on. I try to let you stay seated a little bit so people can meander because when you stand up, it's like, wow, there's no seats, which is a, that's a lie. There's a lot of them. Amen. Come on. Pretty good crowd, though, for the 830. I hate to tell you this. The 1030 has been beating you guys every week. I don't know what that means. Y'all need to get on a stick. But the good news is this 830 crowd's better than it was probably any other summer. Amen. So it's not like you're not doing great. You're doing great. Amen. That's just exciting to me. I love that. Look at this. I cannot believe you keep coming back. Oh, my gosh. Have I met you? You're going to love me. You hear me? You are. You're going to say, I met a man when I met him. <laughs> Amen. Come on. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, son. Man, you look like a cowboy coming. I saw you this morning coming in with that cowboy hat on. I love that. I love that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see you today. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. Come on. Don't give up on your country. Don't give up on your country. Now, while you're looking at me, I know from a distance you're already admiring this shirt. Okay? You get to get one next week. Okay? I'm the model of that today. I know that's exciting for you. But on the back, it says this. See that right there on the back? All right? And look, you can get this shirt next week for $5. Try to find this shirt anywhere for $5. It ain't happening. And we were able to get it personalized with Fellowship uh, Church on the front with the multicolors. And it's fantastic. Let's get, them, let's get them going. Here's the cool thing. There's this gray, but then there's this royal blue. That's going to look dynamite. Amen? So next week they'll be out there. Unfortunately, it's first come, first serve. Just jump on them next week. Amen? And let's get the word out. Look at that. Some crosses in our country. Lord knows that that's what we need in this country. Amen. Come on, Lord, help us. Amen. Please. Amen. By the way, if you're wondering who the kooky guy is, I'm Pastor Gary. I know it's hard to believe, ain't it? If I can be a pastor, anybody can do it, right? Say. You know, I got a strong message today, but a good message. We're, Roger, we're going to morph into a new series. Today we're finishing up Get Up. But the message is called Be Believable. Say that with me. Be Believable. It's funny. We put our faith in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. But we live our life where people can't even believe it. They can't even believe us. What are we doing? We're crazy. So let's talk about it today. It's coming up in just a bit. And then we'll continue that on for several weeks on being believable. Don't you want to be believable? Yes or no? Don't you want that in your life? Don't you? Don't you? I'm Jennifer again. Thank you, sweetie. Here we go. Let's just welcome one more time. I was about ready to pray instead of cuss. Amen. Come on. Let's put our hands together. Amen. One more time. We're in church. Come on. Go get them. <laughs> Amen. Lord, help us. Amen. the sound of the rain from the mouth of the preacher and the sinner just the same tender as a whisper but loud in its refrain may it hang on my lips for the rest of my days there's just something about the name of Jesus 
top of that, whatever that means, guys, okay? We appreciate it. A lot of people watching online, of course, I'm here. Most important thing is that we can get the word out, amen? Praise the Lord. I know you're working hard. Amen. Let's sing this old song, right, son? You gonna do, do it, it the old way? Kind of. Let's do it, then. Jump on it. Let's go. I'm sorry to do song as well, all right? I know the song real well. What a friend we have in Jesus. Come on. All our sins and griefs to bear come on now what a privilege to carry everything to god in prayer the old old song come on oh what peace we often forfeit and oh what needless pain we bear and all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. You sing it. Come on, sing the verse. Here we go. How do we try to set in peace? Sure we do. Peace and trouble in any way. 
It's everywhere. Come on. We should never be discouraged. But we are. Just take it to the Lord and pray. Amen. Come on. And can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? And Jesus knows our every weakness. So take it to the Lord in prayer. There's another verse. Are we weak and heavy? Covered with a load of care, precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer, and do thy friends despise the same? Take it to the Lord. And in his arms he'll take and shield me. Thou wilt find a strong Let's do that first verse one more time, just tenderly. Tenderly. What a friend. Rods back to the top. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer and oh what peace we often forfeit and oh what needless peace Because we do not carry everything to God in Lord, help us today in our life. Lord, we need you in our life. Forgive us, Lord, when we go through life and we don't pray. We're hurting and we don't pray. Struggling and we don't pray. And there you are, Lord, seated at the right hand of God the Father, where you tell us you ever live, you ever live to make intercession for us. You ever live to pray for us. You ever live to hear our request. Lord, burn this old song in our heart today. Do something in us, Lord, even right now in this song where we'll know that you care for us. You say, cast all your care on me because you care for us. Thank you, Lord, for that kind of love. Thank you, Lord, that you love folks like me and these folks, sinners we are. We're not, we're not really fit for you to love, but you commended your love toward us, Lord, while we were yet sinners, while we were sinners. Jesus, you died for us on that cross, you tell us. And we believe that today. So, Lord, we fall at your feet. We fall at your feet. Be in our midst today. Lord, I pray you'll help not one to leave lost here today, not one to get in their car and go home and say, you know, I'm good. I don't, I don't need that. I pray all of us will humble ourselves and put our faith and our trust in you, Jesus Christ. Not in some preacher or some church, but in you. I pray we'll nail that today. There'll never be a doubt again. I nailed my faith in Jesus Christ. Cause it to happen, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. A good old song. Let's thank the Lord we didn't get to do that. Come on, one more time for that old song. Come on, man. What a good song. Whenever we sing that, I tell this story. You'd be seated if you would. Whenever I sing that with the folks, I remember when I was a kid in high school, I got saved. Hellraiser, crazy. And I could sing, I guess. They thought I could. And uh, so they started having me go to a nursing home. Isn't that funny? Me. Long-haired joker going to a nursing home. I used to cuss them out. By now, now I was telling them about Jesus. That's sort of funny. And, uh, but I had a lady just dipping snuff in there. We're in the country, man. 
We didn't hide it. It wasn't hidden. I mean, it's, it's running down her face, all of her clothes. And she would say that, and that I, almost every week, she'd go, can you sing what a friend we have in Jesus? And I can never sing that song without thinking of the snuff lady. <laughs> Come on. Mr. Alex Christie's here to give announcements. Tell, tell Alex you love him today. Amen. Come on. Amen, buddy. Love you, buddy. Proud of him. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? We're glad you're here. Thank you for being at Fellowship Church. We know you could be anywhere this morning. We're just so grateful you chose to start your week off here at Fellowship Church. And if today's your first time here, do us a favor, please. Fill out the guest registry that's right there in your worship guide that you got when you came in this morning. Um, we're not going to call you. We're not going to bother you. We just want to send you a note of encouragement this week, thanking you for being here, as well as a postcard if a big event is coming up, just to keep you in the loop of what's going on here at the church. And good morning, everyone. Thank you so very much for tuning in this morning, watching us live online. Uh, we're just so very, very grateful you're with us this morning. Do us a favor, send us a Facebook message or an email, and we'll do the same exact thing for you. Young Family Fellowship is coming up this evening. Uh, I looked at the forecast. It looks like a high chance of rain, so there's a really good chance we'll be here. But if you new leave your house today and you're on your way out to the park, if it's blue skies, we'll be down the way at Rotunda Park. It's all for young families. It's just a great time. Parents, come on out. Grandparents, come with them. Hang out with them. Have a great time. We play games. We do all kinds of free food. I believe we're doing like a hot dog kind of uh, buffet, like toppings buffet tonight. It's all going to be fun, all for free. Love for you to come on out. And if it's raining or if it's looking like it's going to rain for sure, come right here to the church and we'll do, be doing stuff out in the foyer, having a great afternoon right here today at Fellowship. And we got lots of Bible studies going on at Fellowship Church. We are so very blessed to have a Bible study nearly every night of the week. If you have not plugged into one, check them out right there on your worship guide. You can give us a call at the office to fill you in some extra information. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the Monday nights is all over with, and uh, we're, you know, we still have the Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night. We're going to be rolling in to uh, celebrate recovery in a moment, but on Tuesdays, this used to be just for men, and they've decided to open it up to women. They want to expand. They want to grow their numbers. So if any of you are looking for a couple or uh, even just any of you ladies are single and you're looking into plugging into a great Bible study, this Tuesday they're starting this great book of Isaiah. It's incredible. It's a deep book full of prophecy, full of, full of history. If you are looking to great in, get into a Bible study, this is a great place to start. Um, they're going to go verse by verse. Every single Tuesday, they'd be back here in room four. Love for you to plug into it. Please check it out. And then every Tuesday, we have our friend to friend meeting right here at the church. Uh, every Tuesday afternoon, if you or someone you know is looking to make some friends, they play board games together, they make friends, uh, they go out for lunch. It's just a great chance to fellowship and meet some new people. Every single Tuesday, right here at Fellowship Church, it's all for free. Uh, if, if you really would like to plug into something and you haven't yet, you're missing out. Come on out this Tuesday. Grief shares every single Wednesday we, at 4.30. Come on out here if you or anyone you know is going through the grieving process. They want you to know that you have value, how much you matter. They want you to know that you have a purpose and that you've got things to do and also that you can heal through others, helping others. It's a great, great program. Uh, so again, if, if you know somebody, invite them. Come with them the first time. Let them know that how much they matter by helping them plug into this great program. And then right after that program, it's over at 6 o'clock. It runs from 4.30 to 6. And at 6, our Celebrate Recovery Fellowship Recovery Group meets. Uh, but first, they do a great meal out there on the foyer. They fellowship together before they come in here for some incredible music, followed up by some testimony time, before they break up into small groups. And it's all about getting your walk closer with the Lord. If you, again, anyone you know, want to plug in, get, get your faith on track. If you're, if you're dealing with any hurts, hang-ups, anything like that in your life, come on out here on a Wednesday and you will be blessed. Thank you. Women's prayer breakfast coming up the last Saturday of the month, ladies. Please sign up on your way out today so we have an accurate head count for food and all that good stuff. It's a great chance to make, make some new friends and uh, just start your week off or end your week, I should say, on the right foot. And coming up on the 30th, we have our fun night done right um, at our old offices down there at the uh, Edgewood Center, Englewood, Edgewood, Edgewater Center. And we are just so uh, grateful to have this great program here in our community for the middle school age students. They're dealing with anxiety, 
all kinds of pressures, but this month they're focusing on anxiety, helping children cope with anxiety. And uh, we th they, there's new anxieties now with social media and all this stuff. So if you know anybody in middle school, we really would love for them to plug into this great program. Give us a call at the office for some more details. And this is our town. Thank you so very much for just supporting us by wearing the shirts, putting on the hats, the bumper stickers, all that good stuff. If you haven't yet, we're just encouraging you to do so. Everything's over there. All, most of the stuff in the foyer, all the bumper stickers and stuff like that's all for free. The magnets are all for free. Hats and t-shirts are all $5. If you don't have the money for them, we'd love just to give you one. Just promise to wear it out and about when you're doing your day-to-day -day work. Love for you to do that. It helps people come to church. And again, thank you so much for your giving at Fellowship Church. We're a debt-free ministry. Because of you, if you've not checked out this, give2fc.com. we got new people signing up all the time, and it's just a super easy way to, to give online. You give a one-time gift, weekly, monthly gift. And uh, thank you again for giving through that P.O. box, everyone up north. Uh, we read all of your notes, and we're just so grateful for your tithes that you, know, you remember us during these summer months. Hospitality, all for free right after this service. Uh, fresh donuts from Publix, hot coffee, juice, some healthy options also. We just would love for you to go over there and make a new friend today. Please check it out before you head on out and, and uh, start your day out in the community. God bless you. Have a great day. Love and appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, buddy. Amen. And this shirt next week, five bucks. Amen. And uh, I saw them come in. I said, give me one of them. And I snatched one of them. Amen. So it'll be a good, good thing. Let's just get the word out. I see it all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Got it. Is this a new song we're about to do right here? Yeah. It is a new song. What's it called? Talk to me. Heart of the Father. Heart of the Father. And it's a brand new song. It is. It's and really a praise song, but I mean... What, what mic is that? Get out. Um, Alright, that's fine. We're going to flow into the next song so you get people up when you, you'll fit. Never know a love like yours. So intimate, so powerful. And I've tasted, I've seen, nothing comes close. Never know a love like yours. Jesus, your name is power.
spirit guides me through the heart of the Father. Let your praise ring louder every day and every hour. As your spirit guides me through the heart of the Father. my third mic I've done destroyed after a while you start to get a little complex <laughs> Gosh, Lord help us amen what a great what a great song amen what a great that song before that one the heart of the father 
I love it. You can only imagine how I feel when I'm here. I'm sitting there, and that's my son singing. You can only imagine how that makes me feel. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and uh, it, you know, it's just it's just a beautiful thing. Amen. So uh, I, I come to church like my daughter said years ago. I go to church for love. Say that out loud with me. I go to church for. Love. Can we say it again? I go to church for. Why do you go to church? That's a pretty good reason right there, amen, say. Go to church for love. I look out there like right back, back there, Norbert and Colleen. I could do this all day, but to see the love. When I look at you, you're saying back to me, we love you, Pastor Gary. And I can see it. That's what I go over. My big buddy, Ben, big joker, he could choke you, football player, coaching ball. But I know you love me, and I love you. Do you see what I'm saying? I go to church for love. I want that for you here. Did y'all hear me or not? I want that for you. Had a dear brother this week. He stands out front on the concrete and shakes your hand before you get to Ed and Bill. Bob. Bob. And he had a horrible motorcycle accident this week. He loves you. And right now he's fighting for his life as he shook your hand and as he's loved you. This is who we are at Fellowship Church. Pray for his wife. Pray for surgeons right now. He'll be in surgery a good part of the day. <sighs> you know, here's the cool thing. We know he knows Jesus Christ. Amen. We know he knows Jesus. Amen. I love hanging out with you, but this isn't a rotary club, guys. This is the church of the living God where we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ where people can know that Jesus is their Savior and Lord. Amen. Regardless of what hell you go through. Amen. Good stuff, man. I appreciate it. Now, Big Ben, have you ever prayed in public? Right here. Come on, right here. Right here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's fine. We're going to have our offering this morning. I'm not going to do that just to everybody, but it's about time I choke this joker after a while. Amen. Come on. Can I do an old one? No. Can I do an old one? Amen. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work. You're part of a debt-free ministry here. We appreciate everything you do. And uh, it's not magic time here. I've got a message that's going to make that clear in just a little bit. It's not believable if you put a thousand or a hundred dollars or fifty or twenty in today, whatever it might be. It's not believable that you're going to get a you know a thousand dollars later this week. It's just that's not believable. People lying to you. We give because we love the Lord. We don't give so I'm gonna get me some more. We give because he's been good to us and he's given us what we have. Amen. That's how we do this, okay? It's not magic time. If you can give cheerfully, receive your gift. That's, it's just that simple. Amen? And we appreciate you. Next week's offering, all of it goes to the uh, kids' wing. Amen? So the last opportunity this month to go ahead and help us take care of the ministry. We appreciate what you do. So we're going to ask the Lord. We're going to say thank you, Lord, for the offering mm -hmm. and helping us. Got it. I believe you can handle it. Got it. Go ahead. Hold that mic. Go ahead. Pray for us, Ben. Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us all here today Amen. and the love that you show each one of See us. There? Thank mm. you for the love that you're bringing to Bob right now yes, and the Lord. surgeons that are working on. Wow. Thank you for the offering that yes, can Lord. keep this, this church above <laughs> water, debt free. debt free. And just continue to reach other people That's like, you, like you've reached us and my family Look at that. since we came down Look at here that. a year ago. Look at that. I love you, Lord. Mm. We love you. Thank you so much mm. for our lives and keeping us happy and mm. peaceful in this life. In mm. Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I think you're fine. I think you'll be just fine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. Thank you, buddy. Be seated. Amen. Appreciate you. Thank you. A lot of kids going off to have a good time in the back. God bless you, young'uns. Watching online, thank you for giving. Thank you for giving. You might think you're out there and we don't notice. I know you don't do it for, to get the praise, but thank you for giving and we appreciate you. Okay? It's a blessing to me every week. I go look at the online giving. It's like, what? So appreciate you. Thank you.
To God be the glory, Miss Karen Simpson. Let's thank the Lord for our serving us today. Come on, help me, help me, help me. Thank you, Karen. I've heard that a lot, and I love that song. Amen. It's one of her favorites. Let's go to the Word this morning. Y'all ready or not? Say. Come on. Let's go. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I'm too loud, he'll work on it back there. We just really thank the Lord for uh, Kevin Dragon. For Kevin's been doing sound with me for about 25 years. A previous ministry, he did sound for me. Fellowship's 20 years old, and he's been doing sound with us since the get-go at Fellowship Church. And he's sort of passing the baton a little bit right now. But it's funny, though, he's still up there. <laughs> Isn't that funny right there? But he's helping Scott. Scott, how long have you been coming to Fellowship? Scream it out. Three? Well, I've become your friend. you become my friend, right? And I love you, buddy. And I know you love me. And this, I love this guy. So he's sort of learning a little bit. Kevin's there to help when you need some help. So there might be some issues. We threw him in the frying pan because we got some bad mics. That wasn't very nice, was it, buddy? It looks like it's his fault. It's not. But anyway, Scott back there. But I thank the Lord for Kevin and Vivian Dragon. Can we just thank the Lord for faithful servants of God? Come on. I love you, buddy. I met Kevin and Vivian about 35 years ago to 40 years ago when they brought their child to a VBS that I did, a vacation Bible school. And I was crazy. You think I'm crazy now? I was crazy. And, uh, that, and that sort of, we sort of hooked them years ago, amen? But uh, Scott's come along to do, help us with the sound. I think he works on Wednesday sometimes as well or helps out. I've seen you do it. But uh, Scott uh, served with the uh, fire and uh, New York Fire Department. And uh, he was there for 9-11. And uh, he uh, just has a lot of, lost a lot of people that he loves. So always keep him in your prayers. But you don't realize you got heroes among you here. Did you hear me or not? You got heroes. Let's thank the Lord. Heroes walk among us. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate you, buddy. So anyway, thank you for helping. I just wanted to say that and uh, tell you I appreciate you. Now, when I get angry at you and scream, please don't take it personally. <laughs> no, he's all man. He can handle it. Amen. Let's go. Let's go to the Word. Let's go. Here we go. It's an important message today. We've been looking at the disciples a little bit, and we'll get into it. Let's just let it roll, Rod. Let's just see how we do without me having to repeat everything three times. Let's go with it, buddy. So Get Up is the series. Say that with me loud and clear. One, two, three. Yeah. The disciples were down. Jesus had died on the cross. Who's going to share? Who's going to tell the gospel? You know, so they needed to get up. Today's message is called Be Believable. Say that out loud with me. Be, one more time, be, did Jesus get you up so you could be a phony? Did Jesus get you up so you could be a fraud? Did Jesus get you up so you could confuse the tar out of people? Say, I'm a Christian, and then you're as kooky as the day is long. Is that why Jesus got us up? Say, to confound the world. What, we, he didn't mean for us to confound the world out there because we're crazy. He wants us to confound the world because God loved me, a sinner like me, a hellraiser like me. And that will confound the world, that God would love somebody like Gary Clark. That's crazy that God would give his son for a horrible person like me. You hear me or not? Now, that'll, 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 that'll screw people's minds up. Amen. Say. But God didn't call us to be phonies. Or be crazy. What's that about? Now, if you've got a crazy personality like I do, that's okay. The world needs people like me. And if you're opposite of me, great. The world needs people like you because they can't hang out with me too long. It's okay to be you, but it's not okay to not be believable. It's not okay. People play church. have been playing church for years. Dress it up. Go to church. And people say this, I can't believe they go to church. They say stuff like that because they can't believe it. They can't believe it because the way you live your life, the way you're doing, can't believe it. Fellowship Church needs to be believable. You hear me or not? Best thing anybody ever says to me is, Clark, you're real. You're real. You're real. Okay? Best compliment you ever give me is that we believe you. When you talk, we believe you. Well, why shouldn't you say well, it's because the church is full of liars. Y'all heard me or not? Say, 
I'm ugly today, ain't I? We ain't even got started. Come on. Let's go. So that's the message title, Be Believable. But what's that mean in the series, Get Up? What's that mean? Jesus chose the disciples, say it with me, because they were what? You imagine the religious leaders, they, they were talking among themselves and said how stupid Jesus was. Say, you think they ever said that, yes or no? Now, that's one stupid guy right there, choosing those jokers. They don't even know what they're talking about. To be a follower of a rabbi, you had to have memorized the first five books of the, of the Old Testament. Memorized it. You think Peter memorized the first five books of the Old Testament? Say, no, but do you think he could take a fillet knife and cut your ear off? He was a man. He was a real man. So were the other disciples. Jesus chose real people. They were not religious people. He's still choosing real people. That's who he wants is real people. Amen. Well, I've done this, and I've done, that's how people introduce themselves to me so many times. I've done this, I've done that. It doesn't sound real. Who does that? How about give us your name? Wouldn't that be nice? How about say thank you, and you're welcome, and you know, how you doing? How, why you got to start giving your, your little uh, resume to me? It's goofy. A lot of y'all probably leave today after this message, won't you? It is goofy. Church is full of goofy people. I'm telling you right now, and you might say, I get it. You might say, I'm one of them. Good. Well, I want to help you. How about that? It's time we quit the foolishness and quit the goofiness and quit the craziness. It's funny. We talk about our country and look at it going to hell and all these problems. And, and the church, what are we doing? Are we ever going to get real? Say, are we going to keep doing this kooky stuff? God, Jesus chose 12 men who he knew would fail him. Isn't that crazy? He knew they would turn on him, turn their back on him. But you know what? He believed in them anyway. Amen? I hear something, some buzzing or something. I still have my hearing. It's crazy. Here we go. When you choose real people, though, say it with me. Say it out loud. When you choose real people, you're choosing people with what? Is it worth the risk here at Fellowship Church for us to have real people? Is it worth the, worth the risk? When we have real people at our church, that means we're going to have real problems. Yes or no? Okay. We're going to have real problems. You've got a pastor who has real problems. And I'm not trying to be funny, guys. It's, it's the truth. Why do I not have real problems? Yes, are you the pastor? No, you got some image of some plastic joker in your head. Okay? The best way I've reached people for Christ, I've loved people, is to be vulnerable and let them know when I'm struggling and when I'm hurting or when I've gone through things like they're going through because they want to put me up here, which is hilarious. It's crazy. But that's what we do, yes or no, amen. I was working this week for two days with a young man who's had trouble with the law. And he needed some community service. He walked eight miles, eight miles to meet me three weeks ago. Eight miles to meet me in front of the crosses on a Sunday morning after communion. He walked up to me. And there I was. He had no idea he could even come here and meet the pastor of this church. And there I was. Well, of course I'm here. Where am I going to be, fool? He walks up to me. I shake his hand, he opens up a little bit about what he's going through, and I open back up with him. He needs some help, and for sure he thought I was going to just farm him off to somebody else. I said, son, you come see me Tuesday, 11 o'clock my office, okay? This past week I spent two days with him, working. I could have easily had some of y'all do it, right? Yes or no? You'd have been glad to do it. I'm sure many of you would have. But you know what? The Lord wanted me to work with him. This young man's facing serious problems, hard problems. And throughout the day, and Kim spoke with him, and I spoke with him, and he could drink out of our refrigerator, and whatever it was, he, could, he was blown away that we would even talk to him. Y'all hear me or not? That's not putting me up, guys. 
This young man needs somebody believable. You hear me? And that's who I want to be. And that, well, that's who I am. That's who I am. Okay? Jesus chose me from Rockingham. Can you imagine me, him choosing me from Rockingham? And then I become all highfalutin, better than you. And I forget the pit which he dug me out of. Would that be a shame and disgrace, yes or no? See, and a young man, he's talking the other day, and some expletives are flying out of his mouth. <laughs> and when they're around a preacher, yeah, like you sometimes, Charlie. Stop it. Look at Whoa, whoa, he ducked it. He's ducking. I'm sorry, buddy. He's ducking. He's ducking. I'm sorry. But anyway, but you know what? He's, he's embarrassed. I said, look, I, I've heard a lot worse, and I've said a whole lot worse than what you just said. Amen? But when we're believable, it helps people. Say that with me. When we're what? Believable at what? I know I'm sideways here, but this is an important message today. Y'all hear me or not? How are we doing so far? Good. Let's hang in here. Here we go. So here's the deal. When you choose real people, you're going to have real problems. Say that out loud. When you choose real people, you're going to have what? Do you think we got some people at this church with some real problems? Yes or no? And then we have a program on Wednesday called Fellowship Recovery. These are people that are saying when they come in, I've got real problems. Amen. What's wrong with that? Say, is that a good thing? Or you want them coming in and go, I'm good. I ain't got no problems. I'm perfect. I'm spiritual. I'm telling you, if Jesus didn't pick people to be with him like that, what makes you think he's going to pick you now if you're that way? Say, I want him to call my number. And real people, it's what he's looking for. That's what I'm looking for here at Fellowship Church. I've had people come and leave because I'm, I'm too hard to take. I'm sorry if I tell you you're full of crap, and you are. I know that's ugly, but you, how many have ever been full of crap in their life? Let me see some hands. Let's see right there. There we go. It's okay. You can't say that. Why can't we say? So the flip side is this. Real people are what? Come on, say it out loud. Real people are what? Aren't they? Yes or no? You tell me somebody that's got a book, they read the book, they're going to tell me what the book says. Or tell me somebody who's lived through the garbage, who's gone through the garbage, who's come out on the other side, and then can teach me. That's what I want to hear from. I want to hear from some real people, baby. Real people. Amen. So that's what we're about here. We love Bible studies, but I love Bible studies by real people. You a real person? <laughs> you, you had a life of sin. You find yourself still struggling? Amen. He's one of the Bible teachers. I mean, he can tell you. He's, see, there's good Bible. See, there, look at that. People love him. People love you. But we wouldn't if you weren't real. It won't last. It won't make it. But when you're real, you know what's nice when you're a real person? People are forgiving too, buddy. When you're real, they're apt to forgive you when you screw it up. Amen. But in the church today, or so much of the church has been this way, if you screw it up, they kick you out. Yes or no, amen? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So let's keep looking. So be believable. What a long intro. <laughs> Last week we saw the message fulfilled. Do you remember? I don't know if you all remember. The disciples, they denied the Lord. They left the Lord. They did it repeatedly, repeatedly. He came to him, resurrected one time, another time, another time. And then finally he said, look, you got to stay right here in Jerusalem and you can't leave anymore. And Jesus then ascended to heaven where he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. It was fourth down. You're either getting in the end zone or you're going home. And you know what they did? They got into the end zone. And they, they continued, like he said, right there. They were in unity. They were praying. Are they still real people, yes or no? Oh, absolutely. You think they were still fear, fearful for their life even though they were praying, yes or no? Sure they were. But you know what? They were there. They dealt with that Judas situation. They dealt with the betrayal in their own life, I'm sure, as well. And you know what? They replaced Judas with Matthias, and they dealt with that. So here they are. And what happened last week? 
where they were sitting in the room, the Holy Spirit came and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? You remember that? And then what did they do? They spoke up. They stood up. And then the last point was they fished up. Remember that? How many, how many came to Christ at what first time? Three what? Thousand. From real people who weren't religious scholars. So does, does working with real people work? Yes or no? It works, baby. So that's what happened in last week's message. So now we're moving forward. Say that out loud. And the disciples what? You say it louder. The disciples what? Is that crazy? They were always looking over their shoulder. They are always running. They are always quitting. They were always angry. They were crazy. Well, what happened? Listen, hang in here. They never did that again. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that what you want in your life? Don't you want to be solid or not? Say, don't you want to be solid? Well, quit trying to be religious. How about you be real? And go ahead and, and let it. It's okay to have problems. It's okay. Let Jesus, let go of your pride. Let Jesus come into your problems. Share your, share your problems with somebody. It's okay. Well, what will they think of me? Well, they might turn on you. But if he's for you, who can be against you? I got a feeling if somebody turns on you, more of that's in your head than anything. A lot of times that's just in our imagination. Most people don't do that. Most people are, are tickled to hear that you are struggling and they want to help you. Yes or no? Amen. But we've just been pushed into this plastic mold into the church today. And I refuse it. I reject it. I was on the football sidelines the other night. Coach South, where were you at? He, he just left. But, but I tell you what. Our first game is Thursday, our first real game, even though Thursday night was a real game as far as I was concerned, or Friday night, we were down in uh, Fort Myers playing South Fort Myers. If you know anything about South Fort Myers, there's several NFL players that came out of South Fort Myers. And when we got there and we got on the field, it looked like they got a few more coming too. <laughs> and here we are, not, not near the size, not near any of that, and we don't have the amount of players. We got a good amount, but we don't have 75. Okay, what are you talking about? So... We get down there, and the good news is our boys played hard, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, back and forth, 7-7, 14-7, 14-14, 21-14, 21-21, and guess who got 28? Lemon Bay High School beat them 28 to 21. <laughs> and Coach Southwell drives this into the guys. He bangs it into them. You're Inglewood. You're Inglewood. You're going to be looked down on. You've got to be tougher than everybody else. You've got to be tougher than everybody else. So he has them buy into the weightlifting program. He has them buy into uh, to running and to conditioning. So even though these guys were a lot bigger than us the other night, guess what happened in the third quarter? Guess what we started seeing? They were dropping like flies. Whoop! Cramping up. And here goes another one. Whoop! We didn't have one player cramp up the other night. Not one player cramped up the other night. I love that. That's, I know we're clapping for football, but that's pretty exciting. But here's the point. I'm on the sidelines with them, and I don't do anything except holler and scream. But I'm not screaming, Jesus, help us. Jesus saves. I'm not screaming that. That's not real, guys. Yes, he does help, and yes, he does save. But there's a time and a place... And I've got to earn the opportunity from these young men. And as they face some real problems, they just might talk to me. You understand? And so one guy, we're, we're on the knees for a player. They're on their knees because the player's down on the field because of cramping. And the one guy looks at me and he says, Man, it's hard kneeling down for somebody when they were just punching you in the face. And I, you know what I told him? I said, I totally agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. I would have a hard time kneeling down for that guy. He just punched me in my face. And he looked at me and said, man, if the pastor agrees with me, we're all screwed up. <laughs> my point is this. We need to be real. Are we hearing that today? 
I'm a little long, but it's okay. The disciples never walked away again. I guess they're not calling Jesus crazy now, are they? He picked the right people. Stop thinking you're not the right person. You are somebody. He loves you. You can do great things for him. Quit putting the plastic on it. No, you matter. No, you have value. You hear me or not? God believes in you. I'm supposed to believe in him. You are, but he believes in you. Are y'all hearing me? Be believable, man. Be, but come on, this is the path. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's keep looking. It's not because of their faith. Excuse me. Back it up. Did the disciples stay with it? All of them were butchered. Every one of them gave their life as a martyr for Christ. John was exiled to an island to die like a dog. Remember? Was it because their faith in Jesus became easy? No, it became harder. But you know, that's what I found. It's because their faith in Jesus became real. In my ministry over the years, I found the religious people are the first to fly the coop. When I don't measure up. Who made you God? Who gave you the standard? Say, I found that real people with real problems, when they really get it, they really stick. I'm not saying you've all had to be hell raisers and evil people. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. But I am saying this. Refuse that mold. Refuse that plastic. Your neighbor needs somebody real. You hear me or not? The girl at Publix needs somebody it's funny when you're religious. I don't know how we get by with this. We can chew somebody's head off. I think religious people are the best judges of other people. But when you're real and you've had real problems, you tend to not judge people as harshly. Yes or no, amen. This is really huge, guys. Now, they were real. They were real. Don't, don't miss it. They were real because of the power of who? Of the Holy Spirit. They were real because of the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. What's the word real mean? Let's look at it real quick. It means, it means genuine and authentic. I would have to say much of the church today in the, in the United States is not real and authentic. Why is it dying? Why are the numbers going backwards then? Yes or no? Don't you think people want to be with real people still? Yes or no? I do. The word real means not imaginary or ideal. Much of the church today is, and especially the ultra charismatic movement, is, is imaginary. Y'all know that, yes or no? I'm going to go over that with you right quick in case you want to hate me. Good, here we go. Here's some chances to hate on me. Okay? It's imaginary or ideal to think if you give $50, you're going to get $500 on Friday. That's what they tell you on TV. If you sow your seed, literally a pastor in our community said last week, the best way to get out of debt, the best way to get out of debt is sow seed into his ministry. Here's the best way to get out of debt. Quit spending like a fool, fool. How about this? Have a garage sale with the crap in your garage that you're not using and go give that to a creditor. How about that big, high, expensive car payment you got? Turn it back in. Sell the sucker. Get a used car. Better yet, walk. There's a lot of ways to get out of debt without being spooky. How about this one? Get a job. Y'all hear me or not? But they preach this stuff. It's crazy. Here's another one. Here's another one. If you'll come forward... I'll, I'll jibber-jabber with you a little bit. And if you just from your belly, you'll feel it and you'll start talking in tongues. Guys, you can say what you want to. It's imaginary. If you need to come down front so I can tell you about this stuff in your belly that's going to come out that nobody can understand. You think this stuff nobody can understand is what our world wants to hear? And I know, it's, I know many of you have been in that. But guys, why am I going to stand up here? I'm talking about real people. And you know about the disciples? You know what they said? Now, I'll, I'll, listen, listen. You know what they said? 
when they heard them speaking with this other tongue, you know what they said? First thing they said was, are these not what? Galileans. Translated, dumb, stupid people. Then they said this, how is it, go ahead and say it with me if you know it. How is it that we hear every man in our own what? In our own tongue or our own language? The world will believe it if, if you meet an Italian and you don't know Italian and you start speaking Italian with him. He'll believe you in a heartbeat, yes or no? If you can speak you know, Chinese and you never could and all of a sudden you go and meet, if you can do that, I'm not saying that that's not, that's very believable, isn't it? But for me to get up here or somebody else and to push something that's not believable, I just don't see why we're doing that. You hear me or not? How about another one? I'm hitting all the hot buttons today. It's not believable for you to say you can heal people. But you can't get off your tail and go to Moffitt Cancer Center up in, in Tampa. And the people are coming in, the little children full of cancer. But you just reserve your healing power for the church on Sunday morning in front of the praise people. It's not believable. He called us to preach the gospel, to go in to reach people for Christ. People are dying and going to hell. Is that believable? I know this is a hard message for some of you, but who's going to tell you if I don't? Say. And now here's what you can do. You can turn me off and you can say, he's full of it. Clark's full of it. What, I'm full of it for, for saying I don't believe in magic with the offering? I'm full of it for saying you should be able to heal other people if you can heal when the cameras are rolling? I'm full of it for saying something that People are saying, and you don't know what they're saying, and it, but it's of the Lord. I'm full of it. I don't think I'm full of it. I think I'm saying to you what they're saying. They're saying, would you love me? Would you help me? Would you not lie to me? Say, We need to be believable. The disciples were believable. The Holy Spirit's presence made them what? Here's what's funny to me. Here's what's funny to me. We are already kooky and screwed up. So we receive the Holy Spirit and we become more kookier. How does that work? You think that's God's plan, yes or no? God's plan is to come into a woman's life like my mother who was a drunk who ran around on my daddy and hurt my daddy really bad. He was no saint either. But came into Miss Ann's life, my mama, and made her a beautiful, changed person. People knew her past, and now they could see the life that she was living. It was powerful. Y'all hear me or not? That's what God wants. He wants your life changed. You hear me or not? He doesn't want you just jump on some emotional bandwagon. It's not real. The band will stop playing one day. I hate to say this too. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm being pretty strong today. It's fine. If ministries aren't real, when they get done with you, they'll kick you to the curb. I've had several friends, very close friends, in other ministries they've been involved with. And when their usefulness and when they don't have the money anymore and they can't just do, or they even challenge something that's odd, they get kicked out. Does that sound like Jesus? Or does it sound like he goes again and again and again? He keeps trying to help. Is that what he does? Be believable. Strong. It's as quiet as a church mouse in here today. Not only did others believe, the disciples what? What do you mean by that, Clark? They believed. They were believable. If you ever get to the place where you believe that you are believable, wow, now you're, now you're talking, baby. Yes or no, amen. When you can be happy with you, when you can be in your own, you can be happy with your skin and with who you are and your past, and you can own it and say, yeah, that's true. That was me. I did those things. But this is me now, and God's using me. That is powerful. Amen.
And that's what the Holy Spirit can give you. He wants you to be real, not crazy. Got it? Amen. Say, he wants you to be real, not crazy. So they got it. They got it. They got it. Jesus really is who he said he was. That's what they realized. He really did resurrect from the dead. They realized that. He really is right now at the right hand of God the Father. Do you know that's where Jesus is right now? That's right now where he is. They really did see him send the Holy Spirit. And they said, we got him. We got him. What did the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? He would lead you into all truth, not lies. Truth. It said he would be a comforter to you. The word means the paraclete, the one who comes alongside. It never, ever in any version I've ever read of scriptures means he's going to turn you into a crazy person. You hear me or not? Say. No, it means he's going to be your helper. He's going to help you in your life. His plan is what? This is God's plan. Why don't you get with his plan instead of pushing the church's plan? Why don't you get with his plan instead of pushing some false net? Do you know people go to churches... They don't preach the gospel. They don't talk about the Lord. They're, they Actually, they make up all kinds of stuff. But they go because their parents went. When are we going to quit this craziness? Yes or no? I'm not saying we're the church for everybody, but go to a church where they're telling the truth. How about, is that too much to ask, say? Can you just tell me the truth? We need to be believable, guys. They really believed and they became what? The disciples became what? Let me ask you that. Since you believed, have you become real? Are you a real person? Are you a real person? When you introduce yourself, when you talk to people, are you a real person? Do people even know who you are? It's a good question, isn't it? They knew who they were. You think they knew Peter denied Christ three times? Say. You think Peter, it's in the Bible for Ronald, everybody and their brother knew it. You think they knew he was the joker with a temper that cut some joker's ear off? All they knew, all right. Do people even know you? I'm not saying every skeleton's got to come out of your closet, but you know, it might be nice that you can know somebody and your skeletons can come out. That's not who you are. I don't want you to be that, but if that's who I was, I want you to see the grace of God, how long suffering he is to save somebody like me. No wonder the world doesn't want to get saved, so many of them. They don't see a real person. They don't think they can attain to it. They think you're better than them, and I'm better than them. You know that, right? That's why when people around me, they watch their mouth. Why do you watch your mouth around me? I had a guy in our church, he loves me so much. He treats me with great respect. Then he would go home and not be kind to his wife. She called him on it one day. She said, I bet you wouldn't treat Pastor Gary that way. And you know what happened to that guy? It broke him. <laughs> it broke him. And you know what? She told me the other day, it's wonderful the change in my husband. Come on, I love that. You think if you're nice to me but not nice to your wife, you're real? You think you're spiritual around me but you're not spiritual around your wife, you're real? When they had Jesus with them, seeing was believing. And i got to run, Raj. I'll do better next service. Remember Thomas? He said, Thomas, you believe because you've seen. He said, but blessed are those who've not seen yet believe. See, when they had Jesus, Jesus was the leader. He was out front. When Jesus was gone, they were left. When problems come, guys, when the cat's by the tail and everything's good, you got, you're all right. But when those problems happen and you're struggling, then what? It's so important to be real, to be believable, to have real faith. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, believing is what? Say that out loud. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, believing is what? When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, believing is seeing. I've never seen heaven, but I believe. My mother murdered. My mother's right now listening to me in heaven preach God's word. I can see it as clear as crystal. My mother saying, you tell them, son. I can, still, I can hear her saying stuff like, I'm proud of you. I love you, son. God's done a good work in your life. 
Don't you want to be able to be that way? You got to be real, guys. The world needs us. Amen? The world needs us, man. We don't see to believe. That's what the church says today. Come, come to the crusade. You'll see this. You'll see that. You'll see this. The Bible says you hear to believe. Faith comes by what? And hearing what? The Word of God. Isn't that awesome? You mean, you mean if I can't go where all that's happening, I can hear and be a faithful believer in Christ? You sure can. Amen. Good stuff. Listen to Jesus. I'll pray the Father, He's going to give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. The word comforter, Holy Spirit, paraclete, the one who's going to come alongside you. He'll abide with you forever. Did you know that? Did you know God's not going to throw you out with the trash? I think a lot of times we're plastic and we hide stuff because we think we're going to get thrown out like other people threw us out. He'll never throw you out. Do you hear me? He loves you. Shouldn't that help you become more believable? Say, can't you, let, can't you let some of the guard down and know that he's going to love me? I can do that. I can do that. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither does it know him. But you know him because he dwells with you and he's going to be in you. He said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'm going to come to you. The spirit of truth. That's who he, that's who he is. You'll know him. He's there to help you make, make you be believable. He's going to dwell in you. He's going to be in you. He's going to help you. Are you fulfilled? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? What's that mean, Gary? Well, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Are you a believer in Christ? Are you a believer in Christ? Well, I go to church. Well, then you're not a believer in Christ. Get real. You're not convincing me at all. While well, mama went to church, you're not a believer. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And he is going to put his spirit in you. The Bible calls that the earnest, like when you put money down on a house. You put down earnest money. Amen. That's who you have. He is deposited into your life. Amen. But, but some people tell you you got to pay for it. you got to buy it. you got to flop to get it. It doesn't buy it. It's not flying with me, guys. You hear me or not say? Are you believable? Are you, feel, are you feeling the feeling or are you feeling the feelings? So much of the church is feeling driven. Feeling, 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 feeling. We should be filling, 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 and that's going to help my feelings. Did I lose you? I know I'm a little crazy today. We're done. Your feelings will leave you empty. His filling will leave you what? Let's quit right there, Rod. Can you say, be believable out loud? One, two, three, be what? One more time. One, two, three, be what? Let's thank the Lord for his word. We're done. Let's go. Come on. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Crazy message. Let's get up on your feet. Hey, I knew this was going to be an interesting one. I told Roger, just put it up there and let me go. And I probably, probably offended some of you. Well, guess who did it? Gary did it. So if you're offended, you don't have to, you don't have to pretend you weren't. You can even tell me later if you want to. And since I'm believable, I might punch you in the face. You know I'm not going to do that, right? How many think there's a shot? <laughs> Guys, how do you preach a message like this anyway? I got a feeling, though, it's right. You can argue with it. You can dance around some stuff I said today if you want to. Are you telling me that God doesn't want you to be believable? Are you telling me that all the magic is true? Is that what you're telling me? Are you telling me you don't get ahead and pay your bills by working hard and saving and doing it the old-fashioned way? There's an end run now. You can just go to church, sow your seed, and you're rich. But Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. Is that what you're telling me? Are you hearing me today? 
You start speaking Italian, never knew a stitch of it, I'll be the first to believe you're speaking in tongues. You won't have to convince me anymore, ever. Got it? Why don't we, you know what I like to say, when common sense makes sense, seek no other sense. How many know that, yes or no? When common sense makes sense, seek no other what? Why don't we treat God's word that way? Instead of getting off into la-la land, how about we go back to something solid that we know is the truth and stick with that. Amen? And let's see if your family doesn't see you as believable in our world. Thank you today for listening. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray it'll find good ground in our heart. Lord, I pray right now that people will realize in this room, it's not believable that their good works are going to get them to heaven. It's just not. It's not believable that giving money is going to get them to heaven. It's just not. You say in your word, the blood of your son Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Your word says, he that has a son has life, and he that does not have the son of God has not life. Now that is believable. God, you so loved us, you gave Jesus, that whosoever believes in Jesus should have everlasting life. That's believable. That's your word. I pray today that people will put their faith in you, Jesus, not in a church, not in a preacher, not in themselves. We pray in Jesus' name. With heads bowed, can I lead you in a prayer today where you will believe, where you'll believe, where you'll show Jesus that you really believe in him, you quit playing. That's what I told the young man I worked with this week. I said, son, it's about time you quit playing with Jesus. Stop playing with Jesus and start believing in him. Would you do that today? Can I lead you in prayer? Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. That's believable. You're holy, holy, holy. I'm not, not, not. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin because you're God and I'm not. All this is believable. Lord, I wasn't there when you did it. I believe, though, your word is true. And I believe you did die on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead. I believe that. I believe that. Come into my life and live through me. Save me today. Because I believe in you, Jesus. In your name I pray. With heads about how many to raise hands and say, Pastor Gary, I nailed that prayer today. I told the Lord I believed in him. Flat out, period. I did it. I am not ashamed, Pastor Gary. God, see your hands. God bless you guys and ladies. Thank you, Lord, for a great morning. Help us as we go our way. Lord, would you help us? Would you help us be believable? Help us, Lord. I know it's not going to happen just right away overnight. Bring things to our attention, our mind, etc. Where it looks, it just looks like we're, we're plastic and playing games. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you later, guys. Adios. Amen. I know that was a Lulu this morning, Juana. What? Y'all been thinking I've been smoking something this week, didn't you? Does that sound believable? Yeah. No, it ain't. <laughs> Be good, guys. I love you. I hope